Robert, can you hear? Hello, Robert. Okay, well, this is... Uh, <clears throat> so, welcome, everybody. This is the first ever Billiard Network podcast, and we've got our man, Earl Strickland, on the other end of the line, or the digital line. Uh, and Earl's been working with us, doing commentary on a few few matches now, and they've proved to be hugely popular. What, what, why would you say fans like it so much, Earl? Oh, I never really knew I was any good at it, but... Uh... I did do one a long time ago in the uh, world tournament with Davis. Remember, I said, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I felt uh, that I maybe could, you know, be decent at it. You know, yeah. I had a great time. Uh, that was the greatest uh, uh, commentary I've ever done with another player with Steve Davis. But I have a lot of knowledge of the game, obviously, and uh, I still practice. I still play every day, three, four, five, six hours a day. And I think that helps your commentary. You got to keep your game and your mind fresh in the game. And then, and then when you're doing commentary, you know pretty much what the guy's going to do with the spins and his rolls. But if you don't play and keep playing, I think it could forget how players are going to play shots. I think that, that was a problem they had in snooker back in the day because a lot of the commentators are old and they just didn't know the modern game. <clears throat> They're not players. A lot of those snooker guys weren't weren't great players either. <clears throat> well, they were old players, I guess. But yeah. So I you think pool's going to change. It'll go. The uh, pool's going to start going to player commentators. There's no doubt. <clears throat> it's, it's 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 getting that way a little bit, yeah. But um, what do you, what do you do with your time nowadays? Apart from practice. Well, I wake up. I. I exercise first. I've added boxing into my regimen. I box and kickbox for about 25 minutes. I've been writing that on the internet. And then I do about 600 sit-ups and then I run five miles on a treadmill. And then I have some breakfast and I go practice for five hours. And all I play is rotation. I, I, wanna, I wanna play this placement pool game one day. Just place the balls on the table. You don't break them. You just play them and ask me to run them. I think that's the best way to play pool. And that's that intrigues me a lot, playing that game. It keeps me uh, active in the game. I'm tired of nine ball and ten ball. I don't practice those games anymore. So, either one. So with, play, with placement, where do, you, where do you actually place the balls in, in specific? Well, my uh, goal is to have a light that has a computer in it, and it has a projectile in it, and it casts little dots on the table. And then the referee would place, it's a row full rack to rotation. Right. That's the difference. I think what one of the biggest difference in uh, professional pool is we need to ask professional players to run 15 balls, not three balls, not two balls, not six balls, not eight balls. Every time a professional gets up, he should have to run 15 balls every time. And that makes it more difficult and it makes, it excludes us. You know what I mean? It puts us in an element where no one can touch us. You know, women and children, and whatever, you know. I don't know who it is. The first time I ever got beat by a woman, I wanted to change the game. I just kidding. <laughs> who was that? Karen Cole. But anyway, um, I just want to play a game that's more difficult. And and you asked me to I can't break a rack of rotation and land them exactly where you want them all the time. You can't do that. So just place them on the table and let me run them. And if I miss more than you, I lose. It's easy to score. It's easy to keep stats. It's a very difficult game, rotation, because you got to use the cue ball more. you got to use the spins more. Right. As much draws. These guys today draw out of everything. They want to draw, draw, draw. This game's not like that. you got to use the whole cue ball. And when you put all the balls on the table, you have to use the whole cue ball. And I think that that's one of my goals. I strive for that every day to play a different game, a harder game, and a professional game. Do, do you ever play one pocket? I, I hate it, but I can play it. Don't get me wrong. I nearly won the World Eight ball, World One Pocket in '84 in Tampa, one of those one pocket tournaments uh, Brady Matthews put on. And then at the Derby City one year, I almost won. Shane beat me by. Shane beat me 4-3 in the finals. There's 600 players in that tournament. Right. 
I lost my first match and almost won the tournament. But I have to force myself to play one pocket. I get frustrated and then, then I get antsy and I'll shoot at something I shouldn't. It's just too long of a game. You got to play too much cat and mouse. Right, I understand, yeah. I mean, it's very popular amongst players, isn't it? One I want eight and out, that's it, eight and out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about, do you, do you play eight ball at all? Eight ball's a great game. Eight ball's the first game I ever played. Eight ball was the most popular game. Uh, at one time, it was the most popular game. It may still be the most popular game in this country. Um, and then I moved to nine ball. And then once I moved to nine ball, that's when I started gambling more and uh, venturing into the other games. Right. When, so when, when did Paul start for you as a player? How old were you? Nine years old, I started playing. Yeah. And where, where was that? In South Carolina? Roseboro, North Carolina. Little uh, tobacco town. Small that, tobacco town. And how did you get into the game? My dad introduced me to it. One day we were driving, and he said, you want to go shoot a game of pool? You know, and, and, and traditionally in this country, of course, traditions are not upheld as much anymore. A father would take his son to play his first game of pool. It used to be a traditional thing. But today, people don't care about pool. They don't care if their son plays a game. They probably would would be scared that he plays a game, that it would ruin his life. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, uh <clears throat> Dad said, do you want to play a game of pool? And I said, yeah, and, and I was hooked forever. I only played one game, and I didn't get to play again. A few games I played that day, and I didn't get to play again for a whole year after that. And I, and I couldn't, couldn't forget everything that I did that day when I played that, those couple of games. I, mean, I could remember every shot for a whole year. So you were like, you were hooked? Yeah, even though I wasn't playing, I was still hooked. And then you say, you, when did you start playing regularly? Uh, when I got about, uh, started when I was 10. By the time, I, yeah, one year went by, I was 10. And then I asked my dad if I could go in the pool room once in a while. And he, he went, and it was forbidden. No kids could go in pool rooms. And they had the windows painted, you know, all the way up to the top where you could just peep in, an adult could peep in. But a, a, a kid couldn't see in the windows. It was forbidden. And he let me, he, he knew the owner. That's where I got very lucky and pulled, that my dad knew the owner, and they were good friends from a long time ago. And he said, Earl wants to come by once in a while after pool, after school. Will you let him in? He says, yeah, I'll do it. And that was the biggest help for me, that my dad knew the owner of the pool. And I got to play a little more. How, how old were you when you thought you were probably quite good at the game? I got good really quick. I'd say by the time I was 11, I was fairly good. By the time I was 12, I was really good. And by, by the time I was 12, I was like a road player. <laughs> I had a job when I was five. I actually left home when I was five. Back when I was a kid, you could just wander. You could just leave the house and, and walk three or four miles away. I used to go to the theater by myself, just go to Burger King by myself. I had a job at five. <laughs> I used to sweep the floor at Pittsburgh Bank. But uh, times have changed since then. And uh, But by the time I was 12 years old, I was pretty seasoned, I'll tell you. <laughs> Did you beat the old guys in the pool room? I beat a lot of guys. Didn't matter what, how, at what age they were, young, did they, or old. Did they resent that? I'd take their money. I, I take your money in a New York man. <laughs> they resent being beaten by a kid. Ain't careful, none walked in. She, she's gonna get all the money. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when did you first play? Start play to play organized tournaments. Started that when I was like uh, 19. I played my first tournament. I played a qualifier to get into the. To get it was 1980, I think. 1980 or something like that. To get into the tournament in, in uh, Lake Tahoe. I didn't want to play in it because back then we were all gamblers. We were notorious road players, you know. It was a greater time than now, though, uh, as far as gambling. It's a lot different now. 
everybody's got to know each other now. But back then, we just walked in like gunfighters, you know, and stood there and said, draw, you know, <laughs> like the old day. That's like the Cowboys and the Indians, I thought. But anyway, <laughs> they had this qualifier to get in this giant tournament that paid 50000 and they were begging me. They said, oh, you got to play in the qualifier. You, you're going to win it easy. I said, nah, you don't, we don't play tournaments. It'll, 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 uh, they'll find out who we are. You know, they, you can't play tournaments. That's a road of the code. It's a code of the road, you know, that you don't play tournaments. And uh, everybody's going, yeah, you got to play it. You're going to steal it. And I finally, I played it and I, I won the tournament hands down. And I went out there and, and I lost to Buddy Hall. It was the first time I ever played Buddy Hall. I, I lost to him nine to seven and I should have beat him. I played a shot the wrong way and Buddy wound up winning the tournament. I think it was meant for me to win that tournament, but I was still a little bit inexperienced. And that was your, that was your first proper tournament? Yeah, it was, yeah. And then presumably your, your, your road warrior image was killed then because the people knew who you were. Well, I told a story once on it before. When I won the tournament in, uh, at the qualifier, normally people don't clap after a guy wins a gambling match. You understand? They don't stand up and cheer if you're a ticker tape or a parade. You know, they might say good shooting when you walk by or something. But, but when I won the qualifier, everybody stood up and cheered. And I said, geez, I never heard that before. And I kind of liked that. It was a warm feeling that after I played and performed well, people cheered instead of saying, well, you got lucky or, you know, I'll get you next time. You're a bad guy. You're a good guy. You know what I mean? It was a different feeling and I liked it. And once I got into the tournament circuit, I really, I, uh, I embraced it kind of. Yeah. So this is our, this is our first podcast and hopefully this is going to be one of many. And I think there's a lot of very interesting aspects of your life and your pool playing life that people, our, our viewers and subscribers and members will be really, really interested in. Um, another thing, you, one of your bugbears, I guess, is modern day equipment. What, what's your views on that? I think a lot of this stuff is misleading. Uh, of course, I'm not going to name any companies, but no. I think tips are misleading, sticks are misleading. <laughs> they made the ball bigger and didn't even tell us, you know. In golf, you couldn't just make the ball bigger and not tell the guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> when did they do that? Pool. Pool's like a trick, you know. They're always doing something. They don't even tell you what to do. But uh, I think the cloth made a big difference in pool. 1984, we went to worsted felts instead of wools. And, uh, you know, like the old pool felts, the 19 ounce Stevens and the 21 ounce Mallies. I miss those cloths. I think they had some characteristics that I liked, but, characteristics that I liked, but, but at the same time, the, the worsted felts sped the game up, you know, made the tables faster, and we needed the tables faster. Just much like golf did, you know. the greens used to be real slow they used to chip on the green when they had a 100 foot putt they wouldn't put it they would chip it because they couldn't get the they couldn't judge it now the, the greens are much faster they can just tap the ball and judge it you know and pools the same way they, we sped it up with the worsted felt syrups whatever we're playing on granita cloths they they sped the the, the, the game up and it needed that i will admit that was something that they needed yeah, I mean, when, when, when the IPT happened uh, 15 years ago, I remember the cloth there was really heavy cloth, wasn't it? Where was that? The IPT tournaments. Oh, God, they went back in time. Just, uh, Mike put a 21-ounce Maui on it. It was like playing on a, on a rug instead of a, a, a pool felt. And you, and you played backwards. You couldn't get no inside ball on it. You know what I mean? It would it would uh, go the opposite way when you hit inside ball. You had to play backwards. You had to draw out everything and spin around the table maybe. And you couldn't follow up and down the table very good because the cloth was so thick. And uh, we were all lost. I, I, didn't, I didn't really uh, play well because, you know, we hadn't played on it in so long. 
And Mike Brake wasn't very good at the time, and it still isn't as good as it once was. All right. Now, one of the one of the big talking points in pool at the moment is is the carbon shafts. What's have you ever played with one? Have you ever used one? I tried to endorse one, but I couldn't play with it. I don't. I'm too old school. I'm still playing with a two dollar tip. <laughs> I got a twenty three inch taper. None of these companies believe in this stuff, you know. Uh, I play a different style, a very very uh, unique style compared to most professionals. I have very tall bridges. I bridge way up in the air. I like the stick not to bog up any. A lot of guys like shorter tapers. I like very long tapers. There are some drawbacks here and there, but when I'm out in the middle of the table, I'm as good as anybody with my equipment. I think my equipment is as sound as it gets. I don't think the players know as much as I know about get, getting their equipment right. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I like Elk Master tips. They're old tips. Every tip that I play with is at least 30, 40, 50 years old. I don't play with no modern tips because they just don't suit me. They don't stay on right. as long. Elk Masters stay on the ball about 10 thousandths of a fraction longer. You understand what I'm saying? And I think yeah. the snooker players play with Elk Masters too. A lot of them. Right. They... They want the ball, the cue to stay on the ball a little bit longer. I'm looking for more spins, less middle ball. I really am. I told you I'm a unique player. There'll never be another player like me. Really, they won't, I don't think. And the carbon cue, uh, I just think, uh, like I said, it's just not for me. It's, it, it looks what's, the, what's the difference? Black. <laughs> What's the difference between, for you, in your opinion, between a, a carbon shaft and a wooden one? To me, it doesn't have as much power as the stick I'm playing with. I don't believe it, not for a minute, that it has as much power as the cue that I'm developing to play for myself. Uh, the tip has a lot to do with it, Luke, okay? The tip, the firewall, the materials inside of it, the, the, the taper, everything in a shaft is very difficult to get right where you can play world-class pool and not look like an idiot. You know what I mean? It's very difficult to get a pool cue right. It's much harder to get a pool cue right than it is a golf club or a tennis racket. I really believe that. And I'm sure those snooker cues are hard to get right for those guys too. I'll bet you they're real picky. I'm about as picky as you can get when it comes to a cue. And I just, carbon sticks don't suit me. When I, I play too far off the ball, I'll give you one good example why is because I play too far off the center of the ball. That's the way I taught myself to play and I enjoy it. I love spinning the ball and, and making it look a little more exciting. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just playing end over end every shot and just stopping and rolling. I, I think that gets a little bit boring. I want to, I hope a warp shot does come up so I can show the crowd how good I am, you know? I ain't afraid. Give me a tough shot, something. Let me bend one banana, I don't care. I'll come with it. Or I'll look, I'll fall flat on my face. <laughs> you, you going back, you had a, a very long and successful career playing in the Moscone Cup. Uh, I think you started out in 1996 and continued unbroken for a good years. Now, today, announced the uh, final player for the Team USA for this year's event. He's a guy called Chris Robinson. What do you, what do you know about Chris Robinson? I don't even know him. No? Never heard of him. Never heard Never of him. seen the guy play either. You not encountered him at tournaments? They should have picked me. I play as good as anybody still. But that's all right. Um, well, he's going to feel some pressure, I'll tell you that, for who he is. He's just going to feel, he's going to be like, He's going to have an out-of-body experience. That's basically what the Moscone Cup is. <laughs> you walk in, your body's standing next to you. <laughs> no, I hope he does well, you know, and maybe he will, you know, he'll handle the pressure. I don't know. I haven't seen him play, but I know one thing, and you know it too, Luke, that that ain't no joke, the Moscone Cup. you got to go in there, and you've got to be dead ready. 
Don't take no baggage with you, Chris. That's all I got to say. Just yourself. <laughs> There's a chance this year there won't be any crowd there because of the uh, coronavirus restrictions. How much difference would that make to a player like that with no audience there as opposed to 2,000 people? I would love to play that way. <laughs> I don't think pool needs an audience. They're, like tennis right now, no audience. Golf, no audience. Golfers are loving it. They're absolutely loving it that there's no audience. They get shirked all the time. You know, but I'm going to tell you what, you get shirked easier in pool than any other sport. I promise you that. It's, it's very easy to get shirked in pool, especially if people are trying to get in your head, you know, on the sidelines. The, you know, it's like uh, anybody's game there, you know. It ain't, you can't really control that audience. You know that. No, you can't. I mean, and, and that is part of the Moscone Cup for sure, isn't it, the audience? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a serious game, a head game too. Like I said, I think when all the years I played in it, I tried to make sure I was in good condition. There were times where I was, I was uh, sick a couple of years when I played in it, and uh, I didn't play well. The year I lost to Davis, I was sick that year. And I'm not making excuses. You know, I shouldn't have went and played, actually. I should have not played that year. That's basically what I should have done. And... Uh, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't play that year. But there were times when I wasn't just wasn't playing good either. But it's a great, great event. There's no doubt about that. And uh, there will never be another one like it. You got plenty of wins in it, though, didn't you, though, over the years? Yeah, I did. And I had a lot of, you know, disappointing moments, too. But, but I, you know, if I don't ever get to play again, then I'll cherish the times that I played and, and go on with my life. But I still think I can play. Don't worry about it. I ain't go, you know, and I'm working on my break too. So every day, three, four hours on my break, I break full rack. And then when I go break a nine ball rack, it looks like I'm breaking three ball. So I just got to keep working hard. I don't think, you know, age is just a number. You know, I, You're telling me. I'm going to go anywhere unless I die and get sick. So my game is truly still intact. If you watch me play and practice, you'll see it. You enter, you, well, there's no tournaments about at the moment, but you still it's play. Shame that there's no, no nothing to look forward to either, really, after. There's not a whole lot, you know, pools and, and a lot of jeopardy. You know that as well as I do. do you, professional pool. Do you play professional pool yeah. is in jeopardy. Well, I mean, every sport's been hit bad by this, so I guess it's... Uh, There'll be light at the end of the tunnel soon, I'm sure. I hope so for Paul. I, you know, everybody else got their uh, sports back. Uh, God forbid if baseball was to die or basketball or golf or tennis. I love golf and tennis, but I hate golfers. I don't like golfers. No. I don't like them at all. They're, they think they're better than me. I got more talent in my little finger than they got in their whole bodies. Tell you that right now. I still think pool is the hardest game on earth. I don't care what the rich people say. I don't care what Charles Schwab says. I don't care what this guy says. I don't care. Pool's a great game, and it's just a victim of all the, the wrongdoing over the years. It's a wonderful game. I play it every day. It's crazy difficult and crazy uh, fun to me. Does it frustrate you still? I'm disappointed more than I am frustrated at pool. I'm disappointed at the, the situation of it, you know, what it's become, you know. There was a time when we were doing all right, but, you know, we've got to do something. We need to play a different game. We need to uh, take a different approach. We need to speed the game up. You can't let these guys, these slow, lethargic players are killing the game. I'm tell you that right now. And they know who they are. If they're listening, you know who you are. Speed up. Stop uh, playing for yourself. Make it enjoyable for everyone. Stop trying to antagonize me because I'll shoot your liver out. We put a clock on you, you'll be mine. Don't worry about it, all of you. That's why they never would put a clock in the game because I'd just shoot the whole game full of holes then for sure. Or again, shot full of holes because I the clock can affect me too. You know, you got to 
in better shape if there's a short clock. I promise you that. Then you got to, that's what conditioning really shows up. Yeah. I mean, the, ma the matchroom events have a shot clock in. I think it should be like 24 seconds. Yeah. Not too long lollygag and stand there and try to look pretty, primping and stuff. Everybody's primping. I ain't come to primp. I came to play pool. You know what I mean? You come to win no beauty contest. There ain't no pool player going to win no beauty contest. <laughs> <laughs> there must be one or two. I'm still better looking than all them guys. Look at me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, there's an argument that, I mean, a lot of pool now is seen on, on the internet rather than on television. That's terrible. That's that's not good. That's well, got changed. Well, it's the, it's kind of, in a way, it's the future, isn't it? It's, uh, no, it isn't. Not, not according to me. <laughs> it has to be on TV. And not on ESPN either. ESPN doesn't do pool any justice because they don't believe in it. We need to find a network that believes in us and start from there again. Listen, Luke, I'm going to tell you something, and all of you on this podcast, pool has not begun yet. You understand? Once this game really takes off and is put in a proper perspective and we get the game right, we get the rules right, and we get it we're not sharking each other, we're not mad at each other, by calling each other names, you got lucky, you lucked that ball in, you 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 bad racked me, you you sharked me, you uh you jumped over the ball and got lucky, you missed and snookered me. You gotta get rid of all that and just play pool. Then I think people will get a broader audience. We ain't got another thousand years to teach them how to play one pocket. You understand? <laughs> think about it. <laughs> you can't. The one pocket players think one pocket should be on TV. No. Can't even, it's mind boggling. They can't even figure out the game. So let's play a game where we are more professional and we appreciate each other and we're not shark at each other and we're playing the table, not each other. That's the beauty of golf. Play in the golf course and you're not playing the pool. Yep. Yeah. It is. Um so going back to saying about the internet is that, I mean, like with the with the billiard network, we you know we put some quality matches up, say that you might commentate on. You know, we get like a hundred thousand people looking at those. I mean, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, and that 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 audience will get bigger and bigger because young people kind of gravitate to the internet and YouTube rather than watch television now. Well, I uh, I wasn't surprised. Maybe you were, but well, I know I, I still have a lot of followers uh, and I still have a lot of haters. There's no, it's not, you know, a guy like me is always going to be a love hate situation because I'm just too good. You know, when you're too good and there's athletes that I treat the same way on other sports, when you're like that Djokovic guy, I can't stand his head. His head's too big for his body. <laughs> but anyway, and what he did the other day really uh, put a, a, a lid on him when he knocked the ball into the girl and knocked her down. Then they threw him out of the tournament. That's something I might do. No, I'm just kidding. I ain't going to throw a pool ball at nobody. That's crazy. But uh, but I uh, I think pool is a victim of circumstance. A lot of what's going on. It's a uh, game to get in perspective. Yeah. I look at it. So going back, when, when, when would you consider your the peak of when you played the best pool of your career? Which period was that? Do you think? Whew, I started playing my best probably in my thirties. I'd say I did pretty well in my late twenties. The thing in pool is is you never stop learning. You learn and learn. I'm still learning every day when I go to play. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, learning game it's just if you can stay healthy if you could live a thousand years you could keep learning for a thousand years never stop learning in this game and i think uh you don't a, a, a professional pool player does not learn everything until he gets probably around 40 at least and he still don't know everything i still learned a lot of stuff after 40 
But of course, your your youth is kind of going at that time, you know. And I still think the pool is harder to teach than other sports. It's a unique game. The people that play pool well are very special human beings. I promise you that. Yeah, and <clears throat> and when did you when did you find that when did you find that the game became harder for you? I mean, there obviously, have... as I started getting older. Yeah, just just age related. Yeah, just a little bit of eyesight goes, and then your nerve goes. If you lose, I'll tell you one thing about pull. You've got to keep your eyesight halfway decent, and you've got to keep your nerves in check. If you don't, you're finished. You're finished at 40. You're finished at 45, or you're finished at 50, whatever it may be. Somewhere along there, 55, 60. You're, you, you know, I've seen it happen to a lot of players early in their lives. They lose their nerve. And once you lose your nerve, it's it's worse than the yips and putting or anything else. And, and how I keep that in check is by running. Running is what keeps my nerves in check and keeps me where I can keep pocketing tough shots. Right. Oops. So you're so you're very physically fit. For my age, uh, if you play me, you'll feel me. If I'm if I can get under good conditions and everything's right with my stick and everything, I can uh, you'll feel me at this age for sure. Johnny Archer, I just played him an exhibition match. He beat me thirty to twenty eight, but I basically outplayed him in that match and lost. I made a couple of simple mistakes here and there that cost me the match. But I played awful well. So you still got it? Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. I think I could still run. I think I could run 600 and something balls still if I tried. I ran 408 one time in two and a half hours. That's quick. A guy clocked me six seconds a shot. <laughs> but I still think that's the one thing that's killing the game more than anything is the way these players play today. I watched a clip on Moscone and uh, – who was it? Moscone and uh, and uh, Karras playing straight pool. And they were running like 70, 80 balls in like 15 minutes, you know. These guys, if they run 80 balls today, they'll take, they'll take an hour to run 80 balls. <laughs> you know what I mean? An hour and 10 minutes or something. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, they, I mean, slow, <laughs> slow play is a bit of a curse in any sport, isn't it? Well, it's it's. It, I think it's killed pool. A lot of slow players came into the game, but they were always there. You know what I mean? I played them. I I've seen them all. Uh, I dreaded playing slow players, especially if they were any good. It was hard to beat them. You know. Now, if they were a little bit clumsy and not quite as good a player, I didn't mind them. But I don't like a slow player. Every time I went to look at the board. I would look for the slow players. <laughs> Drive me crazy. And they would play slower when they played me because they knew they could get into my head. And that shouldn't be allowed. I was thinking about that when I was running today, where I've never been given the benefit of the doubt when I play pool. I always got somebody picking at me, whether it was a slow player or somebody in the audience or somebody cheers the wrong way. I don't even like the way they cheer. Guy can make the simplest shot in the world, and everybody goes, yeah, whistling like they're at a ball game over some stupid little shot, right? They do that for some you know what I mean? In my head, just to mess with them. Well, I mean, I think with, with slow play, with, with, with Paul played on the internet now, it, it definitely encourages players to play quicker because – People are like you say. It, it, people can switch off or switch over, and they don't get a following. If players are slow, they don't get a personal following. And if they don't get a personal following, they, their, their revenue goes much smaller. So people are always looking for quick and exciting players, and, it, and in the end, it'll players will start having to play quick. Otherwise, people well, are interested in them. I think that we all have to be on the same page as professionals. We all have to be on the same page, and it's important. And that's why I think that the game that I want to create is is more uh, going to put every player on the same page. There's a 24-second shot clock. 
you can't abuse the clock. Not not one that short. You need to get the clock to where you can't abuse it. You understand? That's the key right there. But at the same time, it gives the player long enough to think out the shot. You know what I mean? It's very difficult because pool is very hard to figure out what to do at times. And it happens a lot. But that's what's wrong with the game, too. Like I said, if you play placement pool, then the player knows what to do every time. Then he's not affected by the clock as much. You know what I mean? That's the key to pool. That's the key to us being more professional. That's the key to us being uh, having camaraderie with each other. It's so important to be friends with each other. I don't like pool players. I don't like the way they are. I don't like the way they're slow playing me. I don't like when they come in and they sit next to me when I'm playing, when they're not playing and they shark me. I'm playing somebody else. I don't like that. I was, I was going to hit one of them out there not long ago out there in Vegas. One of them European players, he's always picking at me, laughing at me when I miss in the stands. I ain't going to put up with that. No one's going to protect me. You know what I mean? I have to protect myself. So Can't you let that wash over you? No, I can't stand that. Another professional sitting there picking at another professional. That's that's just not acceptable at all with me. I'd rather go over in front kicking. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting down. It's just perfect. Just front kicking right over the table, you know. But, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I told you that you can't let a player disturb players because – some players are so great, you need to let them go. Let them do their thing, you know? And you're holding me back. You held me back my whole life. I wanted a shot clock in this game in the 80s. They wouldn't do it. I mean, a short one, too. And you should separate the tables to where you can play. They always wanted to play with us right next to each other where we can bump into each other. That's the most idiotic thing I've ever seen in pool. They're still doing that, setting the tables up where we bump into each other. How are you ever going to play faster if we're all bumping into each other? Ridiculous. There's so many little flaws in pool that need to be corrected. But going back to that game, I told you placing the balls, there's no other way to play pool. You got to take all the luck out of it, and you got to give equal opportunity for both players. And both players have to shoot the same shots, just like golf. Play the same hole every time. And then you'll be playing like golf. And then I think we'll reach a broader audience than pool players. That's what we need, Luke. We need a broader audience. Well, hopefully we can get it on, on our YouTube platform. Um, yeah, it's so... Uh, with, with this podcast, though, I hope you're enjoying it. No, this is fun. Yeah, uh, that's the idea, and because you've got a following. And, and uh, so we'd be looking to do this a couple of times a month and take questions from... The audience watching it from from fans can ask you but questions. they'll have to watch what they ask for well you know if they ask a question you 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 answer it how you, how you, you want me to give them a piece of my mind if they ask the wrong question <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> tell them tell them <laughs> well they might get cut off too <laughs> so what what about what are your what are your what are your plans coming up next next month going tomorrow i'm leaving tomorrow to go to south dakota to place the greatest player in the world shane van boeing i'm going to play him to uh one exhibition match and play on another play on a tournament that he's organized in uh in his hometown it's a bar table i don't like bar tables but i'm gonna do it Are you friends with shane we go to sioux city or somewhere in the next town i think and we play an exhibition match are you good friends with shane by nine. Oh. Are you, yeah. are, you good, are you good friends with Shane? You know, actually, I get along with Shane better than some of the other players because there's one thing that I've realized about Shane versus a lot of the other players, and I'm not speaking for all the players. I'm just speaking for a lot of them. I think Shane has the most respect for me uh, as a professional pool player because, one – He's been watching me since he was three years old. He's been watching videos on me. Two, he knows that I'm the teacher. You know what I mean? He knows and he appreciates that I'm still here. 
That's the most important thing I see in him. He really appreciates that I'm still here and I'm still intact and I can still play and I can still give him a game. He really appreciates that. Where the other players, not all of them, I think, would, would be in, would have that demeanor about it. I really like Shane. He's a great player. He really is. And I know a lot of players have a lot of differences with him. But and I and I think they've complained about him in areas, and I have too. I've had differences with him too. But I really I really think that he appreciates me more than any pool player I've ever met. Right. And uh have you ever have you ever played Shane in a final of a big tournament? Um yeah, I played him just recently. That was our only finals was in Turning Stone. And he made some miraculous shot against me, uh, leading 12-11. I had him dead snookered. He's lucky he even hit the ball. He hits the ball and then flukes the nine in. But it looked like he was playing it. <laughs> but that's the only finals we ever played in. And uh, that was uh, – it was quite a match, too. And I didn't fail to, to uh, produce – Produced some good pull there. I wasn't. A, I wasn't a failure there. Not at all. I only missed one ball, I think, maybe two, and maybe one bad safety or something. That was about it. It was a well played match for both players. That was only a year ago, so yeah. like it was ten years ago. I can still play. Don't worry. And long as my eyes hold up and my nerves, I'm gonna keep exercising. And trying to stay in good shape. I got to stay in good shape or my game's going to suffer and it's going to go. Do, do it. The chance I have is to keep my weight down. I got to stay in the 160s. I can't go above 170 almost. If I go to 180, I'm, I'm, I, I can't beat, I couldn't beat Mary Poppins, I don't think, at 180. <laughs> I'm 169 right now. It's so imperative for me to be a certain weight. I know a lot of people make fun of me and they don't think that I'm doing what I'm doing because they've never seen a pool player actually act like an athlete, but it'll change. If we ever get any big money in it, you'll see a lot of players like me one day. You mentioned about, talked about Shane. What, what other players do you have the, the big respect for? I think Appleton really loves me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Even though I kind of get mad at him because <laughs> he drags his cue, not his kid. <laughs> He really is a good guy. And, you know, and I give him some grief, but then I don't mean it. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> it was just that uh, he plays a little slow for my liking, though. <laughs> he's, not too, he's not too slow, Darren, but... But he's a fun guy. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, which other... Well, well, historically, you must have had a lot of time for Ephraim Reyes. Well, I don't think, uh, you know... The difference in me and Ephraim Reyes is we came from different countries and we came from different backgrounds. And I think that's the difference in our friendship. And I'll leave it at that. That's just the way it is. I don't think we're the best of friends, but we played each other so much that how could you, you know, we're just such a rival. We wanted to beat each other so desperately that I don't think we could ever be best of friends, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but what a great rival it was, huh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there were some great matches. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyone, anyone else that stands out that you? I liked the Miserac. I don't know why. I don't even know if he liked me. <laughs> I liked him. <laughs> Nobody else liked him, but I liked him. And I didn't like him when I first met him. If you hear some of the stories I tell when I'm a kid, I ran into him in a little exhibition down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and he brushed me off. And I told him one day I'd get him. I was only 12. And then eight years later, or nine years later, I'm 21 playing him in the finals. And I looked at him and said, do you remember me? He says, no. He says, I just know you now. He says, yeah, I'm a little kid you brushed off in North in, in Carolina. I told you I was going to get you. <laughs> he had a funny look on his face. But uh, we became good friends in the end. We played a lot of golf together, and uh, we understood each other. That was the difference. What, what, about, what about modern players, other guys that you, you, that you like? Uh, I don't know. I'm having a hard time falling in love with anybody today. <laughs> they just, uh, they're either too slow or they just don't understand me. You know? it's, they're another from another planet almost, you know. I've, I've went from 
the stone age to another planet myself. <laughs> what have I lived? Diff three different eras now, you know? Yeah. Out of. So what it's the beauty of being born in the middle of a century, you know? Because you get to see a lot more being born in the middle of a century. Yeah. You know what I said? Yeah. I really believe in that. So what, what about... At the beginning of a century, you don't see as much. <laughs> No, no, no. What about what about modern champions like Jason Shaw and Joshua Filler? What do you think? Of you them? know, Jason, I think likes me. Uh, we've had our differences, and I like Jason. I'm never going to complain about his speed of play. That's for sure. Uh, I think he thinks he should always beat me, which is something that irritates me about him. But he's a great player. He should. I don't think any player should go into the match thinking they're going to win. Them. I think that's a Conceded, pulls a fickle game. Any game's fickle, right, Luke? Uh, yep. You can't really have that uh, mindset going into any sport that you're going, except tennis. Djokovic, Nadal, and better. <laughs> yeah. Like, pull is harder than all them games. I don't care what anybody says. It's the most fickle game. It's very difficult. The table can beat you. The player can beat you. The roles can beat you. So... That's just the way it is, you know. Sorry, going back about um, <clears throat> Joshua Filler, what do you think of him? He's an odd-looking fella a little bit to me. <laughs> so am I, though. But uh, I think he's quick at times. He wants to play quick, but then he'll, he'll slow down like Ralph or something. The German will come out in it. <laughs> and then he'll... He definitely looks like a German. He, he stands there bewildered at times. But And then one thing I do like about him is he can get up and come with a tough shot. He can do that. And I, 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 I did a match last night. You haven't seen it yet. No. Uh, where I'm talking about he's got a couple of tough shots where he should make this shot being who he is, a young, great, up-and-coming star and pull. Should make tough cut shots, you know, tough shots, right? Like I used to. I used to make tough shots all the time. I still make them. I'm not as good off the rail as I used to be. The young guys are good off the rail. He seems to be a real good rail shooter, but he still makes simple mistakes in the middle of the table with spins and stuff. And I, I question his ball, his ball pocketing at times. He, he wished a couple off the rails that I don't think I would have wished off, but we all do it. We all hit balls poorly and get away with it, but I don't like doing it. And uh, but overall, uh, he's still a bit slow for my, for my liking. But overall, he's a really good shooter. And, but he he'll learn as he goes. He'll learn to follow the ball more. Like I said before, these young guys want to draw everything, but one day they'll realize the draw is going to get you in trouble. Right. Well, that finally that match that you commentated on the filler one is is actually up up for our members now on uh, Billiard Network, so that's going to be available for members only for a period of time. And it's, it's a one good one. Uh, my girlfriend said I did an excellent job on it, so I'll give you a, well, no. a well, preview. <laughs> I think everyone else did, but um, yeah, so that one's up for our members. But um, so where he plays the Syrian guy, which is not a lot of pool players from Syria, that's for sure. That was Muhammad, right? Yeah. Boy, is that guy fast. I could barely keep up with him. I wonder if any other commentator could commentate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I could barely keep up with him. And he was playing backwards, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, <clears throat> well we hope I'm, I'm sure I'd like to meet him one day. Yeah. Well, we, we look to wrap up now. And I hope everyone enjoyed listening to well. And he's... Uh, on a variety of subjects. Next time, you'll have the option to ask him personal questions yourself in the in the chat, and he'll answer them if he wants to answer them. Um, but we'll be looking to do another podcast with Earl in the next few weeks or so. But stay tuned to the Billiard Network and join him, join as a member, and you can watch all this ahead of everybody else. But it was great talking to you, Earl. And uh, thanks, Luke. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. Okay. Bye.